Hello and welcome to this introduction of Corona SDK, the fastest way to build mobile apps for iOS, Android, Kindle Fire, and Nook. Find more information at coronalabs.com, follow us on Twitter at coronalabs, or like us on Facebook slash coronalabs. Now we know you want to make amazing apps, and Corona SDK can help you do that. Visit coronalabs.com slash case-studies for a list of incredible apps that have been developed using Corona SDK. So why should you use Corona? Well, it's easy, it's fast, and it's powerful. Lua is the only language needed to develop for multiple mobile platforms. It has a built-in physics engine, and it has a strong developer community that is backed by a dedicated development team. In the next few minutes, we're going to show you how to get things set up. We're going to open our first project and see the physics engine in action. And then we're going to leave you with some resources so you can start using Corona SDK. First, let's talk about requirements. In addition to Corona SDK, there's some third-party software that you'll need to install to get started. This includes software that's required by the development platforms, as well as some useful tools to make development easier. If you want to build apps for iOS, you'll need to become a registered Apple developer and download Xcode. You can find Xcode at developer.apple.com Xcode or just Google Xcode. Once you're logged into your developer account, look for the Xcode4 download link in the iOS Dev Center. Click on the View in Mac App Store button to download the latest version of Xcode. If you're using an older operating system, click on the View Downloads link to download a version of Xcode that works with your operating system. If you're on Windows and you'd like to compile Android applications, you'll need to download JDK6. You can find that at oracle.com slash tetnetwork slash java slash java se slash downloads. Once your platform SDKs are downloaded, you'll need to download Corona SDK. You can find it at developer.coronalabs.com slash downloads slash Corona SDK. Writing code using Corona SDK is extremely simple. In fact, all you need is a text editor to get started. For this introduction, we'll use TextMate. You can download it at macromates.com. If you're on Windows, you can use Notepad++. Find it at notepad-plus-plus.org. With Corona SDK downloaded and installed, you'll want to double-click on Corona Terminal within the Corona SDK folder to open up Simulator and Terminal at the same time. You might be tempted to click on the orange Corona Simulator icon, but that only brings up the simulator and not the terminal. We want both so that we can also send output to the terminal as we work with our app. To create your first project, all you have to do is click New Project in the simulator. Give your app a name, select what type of template you'd like to use, choose a screen size from one of the presets or use a custom dimension, and then set the orientation. For this demonstration, we'll open up one of the projects in the sample code folder. Corona SDK comes with a large collection of sample code. On the Mac, go to Applications, Corona SDK, Sample Code. Within the sample code, we'll open up the Hello Physics sample. With the project folder selected, you can either click Open to open the project in the simulator, or you can double-click the project folder to do the same thing. As soon as the project is open, the simulator loads and the app begins working. It's worth noting that as you work, you can either manually refresh the simulator or the simulator will automatically refresh when you save your code changes. Opening the main.lua file, we see that there are 10 lines of actual code. If we remove the code from the project and save our file, the simulator refreshes and we see that we're left with an empty screen. So the first thing we need to do is add physics to the project. We do that by creating a local variable called physics and requiring the physics library. We also need to start the physics engine so that everything works properly. The next thing we need to do is add our sky background to our project. We do that by creating a local variable called sky and assign it to display.newImage to pull in a PNG of our sky background. If we save the project at this point, we'll see that our background appears, but it seems to be centered in the middle of the screen. We want it to be aligned to the top of the screen. So let's add some positioning coordinates to our sky image. In Corona, positioning is measured in pixels from the top left corner of the screen, which is 0, 0, and the reference point on our image is the center of the image. So let's set the X to 160 and the Y to 195. If we save our project now, we see that our sky is aligned to the top of our screen and now we can add our ground. We'll add our ground image by creating a local variable called ground and assigning it to display.newImage and we'll pull in the PNG of our ground image. If we save the project at this point, we'll see that the ground is floating up in the sky. So let's set the coordinates on that as well. 
We'll set the grounds X and Y to 160 and 445 respectively. If we save the project now, we'll see that the ground is where it's supposed to be. Now let's add our crate to the project. We'll create a local variable called crate and assign it to display.newImage to pull in the PNG of our crate. If we save our project, we'll see that our crate is suspended in the sky. Now let's assign it some starting coordinates. We'll set the X to 180 and Y to negative 50. And to make things interesting, we'll set the rotation to 5 so that the crate lands at an angle. If we save the project, we'll see that our crate is in position and ready to go. Now we need to add physics bodies to our ground and our crate so they'll interact with each other. First we'll add a physics body to the ground and we'll give it a static body type so that the crate will stop when it hits the ground. Otherwise, the crate would just fall through the ground and keep falling. Next we'll add a physics body to our crate so that it's affected by gravity and will fall towards the ground. If we save the project, we'll see that the crate will fall from the sky, hit the ground, bounce and come to rest. And that's a quick look at how to open a project and work with Corona's physics engine. For more resources and tutorials, visit coronalabs.com resources and find documentation at docs.coronalabs.com. You can also find more sample code as part of the Corona SDK download. On the Mac, look for applications slash Corona SDK slash sample code. You can also find a list of excellent books on Corona SDK at coronalabs.com slash products slash books. If you have questions during development, be sure to visit developer.coronalabs.com slash forum. And be sure to tune in to Corona Geek, the weekly show devoted to mobile app development using Corona SDK. Thank you for watching this introduction to Corona SDK. Find more information at coronalabs.com, follow us on Twitter at coronalabs, and like us on Facebook slash coronalabs.